The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Data uses the power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things you are looking for, Lady Data. What is on the Great Search this week on DigiKey.com? Okay, so this week on the Great Search, we had a request, and I love requests, so send them in. Um, so Puppy2331 Puppy asks uh, us to please find them an analog magnet sensor. So um, we've covered magnetometers, before, where you have I squared C or SPI output, um, you know, I have a couple of favorite ones like the TMAG series, I think. Um, I'll show it. This is an I squared C Hall effect 3D sensor, so it can read uh, magnets, but it's digital output and it's surface mount. So um, I'm going to guess that this person wants a through hole, easy to use analog output magnet sensor that is, um, because they said analog, I'm assuming they don't want just a switch. It's easy to do a switch where you just detect whether the magnet is nearby or not because it, you know, turns on and off a switch. Um, there's read relays that do it. Those are super inexpensive. They're mechanical. Um, there's Hall effect sensors that have digital output or open drain output, but they specifically said analog. So let's find a magnet sensor that will um, read north or south on a magnet and give you an analog voltage depending on how close it is, and that will be used for proximity sensing. So um, you know we're we're just going to start by searching for magnetic sensors. And that is a whole category. Uh, so there's a couple of different categories um, available here. So we don't want switches. So there are solid state switches that are not mechanical. They're not reads. They're not read relays. They're not like a mechanical switch. Uh, they do use the Hall effect, but they have a switch output. So it's like digital output, even though it's not a digital protocol. We're not going to do that. There's also modules that are like fully enclosed. If you're building like a finished good or a robot or like some automation, you might want to ready to go, you know, enclosed uh, module, but we're going to go with um, a linear compass IC. Even if it's not a 3D, um, they're kind of called compass ICs. Okay, so first up, um, we definitely, let's put back to stats. We can see all of our options. So many options. Um, so let's go with active. And uh, let's go with through hole. Remember, we wanted a through hole part for this person. And I want something that's in stock. And I'm going to exclude the marketplace products. So you can see, like, just before we even get into like our specs, it's already down to you know about a hundred options. Um, okay, and then the output type. So remember, they wanted analog output. Um, so you know, there's this dash. I don't know what that means. A wheatstone bridge would mean that it's a it's a resistor, so you'd have to like do the wheatstone bridge amplification. I, I want it something that doesn't require external circuitry. PWM, I'm assuming they don't want because PWM is hard to read because you have to read the pulse width. So I'm assuming they really do want analog uh, current or voltage. The reason I want to say current is because you can always put a resistor to create a voltage from the current. Um, so let's see how this goes. So. Let's apply. Okay, cool. Um, let's see a couple, couple options we've got here. So these are looking really good. There's these uh, through hole components. Um, let's next up do voltage. So they didn't specify a voltage uh, and they didn't specify a sensing range. Um, that is actually kind of important because depending on um, the, how strong your magnet is, um, you might want to either measure the earth magnetic field or a weak magnet. It could be like under those kind of like fridge magnets, or it could be a really strong rare earth magnet. They didn't say, but let's do the voltage supply first. So I want it to work with three volts and five volts. That's kind of my preference. Um, so let's look, uh, this is within range and I'm just shift clicking to pick up all of these three to five volts and three to higher volt version so now we're kind of cut our options in half uh, and then the next up question is um the range uh the sensing range again they didn't mention it but i'm going to say uh you know maybe plus minus 20 and above so fairly strong the, you know you want to have it be um the range of your sensor should be matched to the magnet because you don't want it to saturate if it's too high and you don't want to have the voltage kind of 
go up and down enough to be measurable by your microcontroller um, when it's low. So let's uh, let's look here. Okay, so we're down to 40. I feel like that's a good place to start. So let's look at pricing and see where we end up. So um, one thing I notice is that the kind of the front the front page of of did you know when I search by price is all this DRV 55x series, and that's kind of promising. Um, there's a lot of them in stock. Um, they seem very popular, and they're 50 cents a piece. So let's look at one of these you know it looks like it's drv 5053 and then letter 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 so in the data sheet um analog bipolar hall effect sensor that sounds right linear output hall sensor uh looks like there's a bunch of different sensitivities available so it can be um as little as 11 millivolts per millitesla so that's good if you have a very strong magnet to 90 millivolts per millitesla Tesla, that's if you have a very weak magnet. Um, available in both surface mount SOT23 and SOT uh, TO92, so through hole. Let's see, wide voltage range, no regulator required. Um, it's kind of nice. And what's neat is uh, it's, it's stabilized. The analog, the zero to two volt analog output responds linearly to the applied magnetic flux density. And distinguishes the polarity detection as well. So that's kind of nice. So you can detect whether it's north or south. A lot of Hall effect sensors will only detect one, like either it's south measuring or north measuring. It doesn't tell you which one. Um, what's nice about this is it looks like the output, which is two volts, so it's zero to two volts output. Um, it starts with the strongest north is up to two. And as it goes down to the south side of the magnet, it will... Um, go down to v min which is probably around zero sounds like v min and it looks like there is oh you can get it in negative or positive polarity sensitivity and that they'll just be the opposite way so you, know, you can decide whether you want north to be positive or north to be negative uh north to be a high voltage or north to be a low voltage um let's see in v min they don't actually say what V-min is, but I bet it's just zero volts. I think they're just saying like zero volt. Okay, output voltage point, um, two, point 0.2 volts to 1.8 volts. So yeah, it's about zero to two. And at uh, zero millitesla, like so no magnetic field detected at all, it's about one volt. So, you know, sounds pretty good. You can use this with uh, three volts. Uh, logic so your feather or your uh raspberry pi pico or you can use it with an arduino um you just won't get you know you just make sure you know that you have to divide your five volt range down um when you get the analog reading out you'll have to like kind of scale it down to get to the zero to two volt range but this looks pretty good and it's available in a lot of different sensitivities and looks pretty solid and it's really inexpensive so um this is going to be my pick for the great search and there's a ton in stock so you're in luck if you need it if you happen to need 7668 uh go to town great search